Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com and this is episode 4 of Photoshop for Photographers and today we're going to cover layer masks and layer masks are a real powerful tool in Photoshop so we're going to get right into it. I'm going to show you how they work. So I'm going to start this like I think you might start it. I'm not going to have Photoshop open. I have these um, three files and I want to take different elements of each of the three files and have them in one file using masks to mask out parts of the images I don't want to use. So I'm going to select these three files by clicking on the first one, holding the shift key down and click on the last one that will select them all. I'm going to right click on them and I'm going to have open in Photoshop CC. So open, drag them over and have three separate layers in Photoshop in a second. So we have the three tabs excuse me what this is is my son Joe uh, in this first shot he's sitting right in the middle of the bench reading a book in the second shot uh, he's at the far left of the bench looking over the imaginary person's shoulder at the book and in the third shot you probably guessed he's at the far right of the bench and he's looking over reading the book And what we want to do is we want to have one sh image with three Joes all looking at the book so what we're gonna do because we're going to go back to the first one for a minute and I'm going to make eventually we're going to have all three of these images as layers on this um, panel and we're going to use the masks to help uh, block out parts of the image we don't want and let other parts of the image that we do want through so what we're going to do is we're going to go to the second image first and I'm going to drag it over and put it right where uh, the first image is and the way we do that is we pick the move tool it's the top uh, first tool right here and we just click anywhere on the image and hold on to it with the left mouse button and just drag it right up to the first tab and now we're going to drop it right on top of this image and what we'll do is we'll hold the shift key down when we let go of the left mouse button and that will drop it right in the middle if I didn't hold the shift key down it would be off center it could be over here it could be down here and then we'd have to fiddle around with it to try to center it this centers it automatically for us okay where we stand now we have the two images as layers I'm going to turn the top layer off by hitting the little eyeball that's to the left of the uh, layers panel and you'll see now the background layer is showing through and uh, that's where Joe is sitting there reading his book we're gonna turn back on that layer and now it's totally covering up that bottom layer and Joe that was reading the book is disappeared and we want Joe to come back so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a layers mask right here on this layer one so the way we do that at the very bottom there's um, it looks like a rectangle with a circle in the middle that's your um, create a new mask add a layer mask uh, button so when we click on it <coughs> it'll create the layer mask now be, by default it created a white mask and what a white mask does is it it pretty much lets everything from the layer here where I'm pointing this top layer just go right through to cover up this layer so nothing is being blocked everything is getting through so everything is going through this way and covering up this bottom layer we don't want that. We want everything from this top layer to be blocked. Not everything. We want almost everything to be blocked so we see Joe down here. So we want to make this layer black. So white will let everything through. Black is going to block um, everything where the black is at least. So there's two different ways we could change this to black. The first way, well, one thing I'm going to mention in Photoshop, there's a, always a lot of different ways to do the same thing. So when I, if I say there's two different ways, you don't have to email me and say, you know, three other ways you could do it, because I know there's a bunch of different ways. Um, I should probably state there's two easy, convenient ways to do it. I clicked on it. I created the white mass. I want to make it black. I could hit Command or Control I. That inverts it. Now, did you see what happened when I did that? Now it is not allowing any of this picture to show. It's blocking it off. It's only letting this picture show, the one that's below it. All right, see Joe sitting in the middle. Watch, I'm going to invert it back to white again by hitting Command I. If you have a PC, it'd be Control I. See how it's now this top layer is only being shown. I'll hit Command I again, Control I if you had a PC, and now as you can see, it's blocking it, so only the bottom layer is coming through. 
Now, that's one way you can make a black uh, layer mask. There is another way, and I'm going to back out of this. You could back your steps up by hitting your Alt or Option key, the Command or Control key, hold those two together, and hit the Z as in Zebra key. And you'll just back through your steps of what you just did. And now I'm back to the two layers. The other way to get a mask, black mask here that I think is very convenient, and this is the way I always do it, is you hold the Alt or Option key in when you click on the Layer Mask button. And it will create the black mask right off. So hold the Alt or Option key down and click on that Layer Mask button and you'll have a black mask. Um, as I mentioned, I think in previous episodes, take notes as I talk. And you might have to stop and write down your notes and then uh, play it some more. Okay, so now we have this top layer. Um, it's um, totally blocked off and we can't see it. Now we want what Joe was sitting here, we want him to come through. So when it was white, he was coming through when the layer was white. So all we have to do is paint white right on this mask, right where we want Joe to come through, and it will come through. So we go to our um, color swatches, we make sure that white is in the foreground, and you could switch it by hitting this 90 degree arrow key. We'll, we'll flip-flop the two colors back and forth. You could also hit the X, or that's the X is an X-ray key on your keyboard, and it will flip them back and forth. If you don't have white and black, like you were playing around with Photoshop and you have, you know, purple and chartreuse here, just hit the D as in dog key. That means default. D is in default, and that will put the default black and white colors back there. So, okay, we have white as our foreground color, and we want to use a brush. We're going to paint white on the black layer mask. So we get a brush, and we could get a fairly large brush. And the way I do it very quickly is the right bracket key makes the brush bigger, the left bracket key makes it smaller. And all we have to simply do now is make sure we're clicked on the black layer mask, and we know Joe is sitting over here, and we just paint right where he's sitting. And like magic, he appears in the shot. And since I used a tripod, and um, I made sure the camera did not move between the three exposures, the background stayed the same, the bench stayed the same, the only thing that was different was Joe moved around for all three shots. Okay, so as you can see, if you look at the black layer mask, we now have a blotch of white right where I painted. So that's letting Joe in this top layer is sitting on the left side of the bench and that is now letting him through to this picture and being layered on top of it and as you can see we have two Joes so far and we want to get a third Joe in there so we're gonna go over to this third tab this is where the third Joe is now residing and we're gonna move him over by clicking the move tool top left hand tool we're just gonna grab the picture anywhere here drag it up to that first tab again and then we're gonna drop it square on this picture by holding the shift key down when I drop it and now it's right on top now we have the same problem we had before in that this layer now is on top of all the other the other two layers and it's totally covering up we can't see anything under it so we need a layer mask and we need a black layer mask so it blocks it out temporarily so we're gonna hold the alt or option key in and we're gonna click on this mask icon down here and we created the black layer mask now this top layer is not being seen at all it's being blacked out the other two layers are being shown now what we got to do is, you guessed it, we're going to paint white on this top layer. It's called layer 2. So I'm going to go over to the brush again. We know Joe is on the right side of the bench over here. We're making sure that white is our foreground color. And we're going to paint right here where Joe is sitting. And make sure we get all his foot in there. And he's there. Now let's say I mean, we're done now. We have our three Joes. They're all reading the book. Let's say you made a mistake and you had like a nervous uh, twitch. You didn't drink enough coffee and you went, oops, and you took out part of Joe over here. You see what I did? I, I went, I'm painting white on this mask, but I, I painted too far over. So too much of this picture is coming through now and it's covering up the middle Joe. 
All you have to do is paint black on the mask now. So you switch your colors over here. by You can click on that 90 degree arrow or as I mentioned you hit the X key and you go back to where you made your mistake and you just make sure you're still on that mask and you could just paint black there and it put Joe back where he belongs. So that is a very very simple application of layer masks and I know when I first was learning layer mask it, it took me a, a little while for it to sink in but once it sinks in it's really super simple I mean it's very very easy and you'll be doing mask all the time and it'll be second nature so what I would suggest you do is I'm gonna have these three files on my website and you could download them for free and practice and practice with the uh, three files that I, I am showing you what to do and once you do it two three times you'll be like an old pro it'll come second nature so that's it for episode four of Photoshop for photographers and we're gonna be building on upon everything we learned we did selections and clipping masks and we've done now layer masks so now we're gonna do some little more complex things with um, with selections and masking and in the in episode five so we're just gonna keep building on what we're learning until we get into some really advanced topics so thank you everyone for watching if you guys haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate it. And come over to my website to get those files. Thanks a lot.